Hey everybody, it's Nikki, and I'm here to do a quick video, maybe, um, that's my personal experience, not to be used as medical advice. Um, I've been kind of laying low a little bit. I'm, I think maybe I'm on the brink of burnout, um, which would not be okay with me or for me. Um, so I'm trying to slow it down a little bit. Um, however, I am wearing the T-Slim, and Medtronic did send me the updated transmitter, I think by accident, I'm not really sure, um, but I have it. So I have decided that I'll go ahead and wear it a little bit alongside the Dexcom um, to see if I could help people figure out some of maybe what the new rules are, you know, because there were definitely there were definitely rules on the old transmitter, and it definitely appears as if those rules have been relaxed on this one. Um, I'm not sure yet what the new rules are or if there are any, but those old 35% and everything else I don't think apply anymore. But um, that's not what this is about. Um, I wanted to, I, I was hoping to do some experiments with the um, Guardian and with the new transmitter and maybe trying to mess around since I'm not wearing my 670G right now. I'm just wearing the Guardian and kind of looking at what type of insulin it would be giving me. Um, you know, the, the, um, the possibilities are endless, I guess. I could maybe mess with auto mode. Um, I could mess with settings. I could mess with ICR settings and everything else and just to see, you know, about microboluses. Um, and I'm using, right now I'm not wasting any insulin, I'm using, I'm pooling old insulin that's been in my fridge for years, um, and I'm taking out my leftover insulin from my T-Slim, whatever's left in that cartridge at the end, and I'm using all that stuff in a new, in a new reservoir, um, so I'm not wasting anything. So it's a good setup, there is a whole lot of potential for things I could mess around with. I'm really excited, at the same time I still have to be tending to what I'm doing, and that is I'm being diabetic, so I'm trying to do that as well. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but um, basically what I can do right now, because it's fairly easy, is I can compare, because I'm, you know, I'm currently using Basal IQ Suspense, or Basal IQ, um, I can compare what would happen in my 670G manual mode with, I started with Suspend on Low, to take a look at what the two pumps would be giving me as far as um, you know, my insulin, um, and, and how soon they would resume insulin. Um, my brain is tired, I think, so I can't actually figure out a sentence um, start to finish. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. It's not all that easy to do because, um, you know, the 670, if, if it maxes out at two hours suspend, then you lose the suspend feature for 30 minutes, which I was just told is also true of the T-Slim. Um, however, I never get to the two hour um, minimum or suspend with the T-Slim, so that hasn't happened yet. However, um, trying to get them to start at the same time is very difficult. Um, but last night, I actually did, by luck, manage to get them very close in proximity, cl close enough to really take a look at how they handled um, a falling blood sugar and then a rebound, and at what point they will turn back on again. So that was the point of this video. It's taken me 16 minutes <laughs> to get there. I'm in a whole lot of incomplete thoughts, but that's where I am right now. So I wanted to share with you guys some numbers um, which is just a straight comparison between the 670G manual mode suspend before low um, versus the T-Slim basal IQ suspends. Um, okay, so, and then I had stuff to say about the new transmitter too, because that's really been quite impressive. But, um, okay, so here are my values, and here are the times, um, and this is why I think I really like the T-Slim much more and why I've learned how to trust it because it wants to turn my insulin back on, whereas my 670G did not want to turn my insulin back on. Um, so last night around, not around, at 10.58, my, my two pumps are three minutes apart. That would be my downstairs alarm and the cat. So I'm gonna let it go for a second, it'll stop. Okay, um, it'll stop, please stop. At 10.58, PM, um, my Dexcom went ahead and suspended itself um, at a Dexcom value of 97, a Guardian value of 117, and a meter value of 88. Um, the T-Slim will suspend itself, if that's that predictive uh, suspend. So basically it knew I was dropping and I would be below a certain threshold within 30 minutes, so it went ahead and suspended me. 1058, I'm gonna go ahead and make that 1101 because they're three minutes apart. Um, so that way they're starting, you know, from the same time. Okay, at 11.09, my guardian suspended itself. Um, and, I, and I did not write down what value it suspended itself at. 
it, my guess is it would have been less than 117 because I had, I had just tested that a couple of minutes before. Um, or I had just seen that a couple minutes before. Okay, so 1058 Dexcom suspends at 1128 p.m. at a sensor value of 54, the Dexcom resumes itself. So a 30 minute, so again, 1128 is like 1131. It was just a straight 30 minute suspend and then it resumed itself even at a sensor value of 54. Um, 11.09 is when Guardian suspended itself. It never resumed at all until it maxed out at two hours. Um, so again, that straight comparison is for the exact same values. The T-Slim suspended for 30 minutes and the Medtronic 670G suspended for two hours. Um, it's why I got very frustrated with the 670 because I don't want two hours with no insulin. I barely want 30 minutes without any, ins any insulin, but that can sometimes really be okay. Um, however, two hours is out of the question for me. Okay, so here are the, here are the values, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, Dexcom resumed at 54, sensor volume of 54, um, at 12.58, so this was about an hour, um, about 50 minutes after the Guardian had suspended. My Dexcom was showing an 87, my Guardian was showing a 74, my meter was a 79, so the Guardian and the, and the meter were very close, um, but I was still suspended in the Guardian. At that point, my, uh, you know, my Dexcom had been resumed for, um, for an hour and a half. Is that right? That's right. Okay, and then at 1.10, at 1.10 a.m., yeah, an hour and a half, at 1.10 a.m., my Dexcom was showing a 94, my Guardian was showing a 77, my meter was showing an 83, and that's when I got that two hour max um, suspend, and I was kicked out of the suspend, which then makes the suspend unavailable for 30 minutes, um, and that was that. So it was a full two hours compared to 30 minutes for basically all the same values. Um, this was not, I thought this was gonna be the example. I did it the other night, where my guardian was kicking ass. I'm sorry, pardon my language, but it was kicking ass. Um, it was spot on. And I think maybe it's the new transmitter. And I think maybe they've done something. I didn't think that they could, but I think maybe they've done something to make, make it more aggressive because it seems to be overshooting my blood sugar all the time, which is something I'm more used to the Dexcom and the Libre doing. So I'm not sure how it could be, but that's what was happening the other day. And, um, and my Dexcom and my um, guardian were going neck and neck Every five minutes, they were, I mean, every five minutes with the updated value, it would be like 92, 90. Um, you know, the next couple of minutes would be like 78, 79. And it went, on, it went on like that for an hour and a half. And it didn't matter if I fell or I rebounded or whatever. I mean, the Guardian was just right on. And I have never seen my Guardian behave like that. So I'm assuming maybe after the charge of the transmitter and the new transmitter, and I'm not even sure... Maybe that's what it was. I just started a new sensor tonight, so I'm still not positive that it wasn't just a fluke. Um, but even if that's the case, that comparison between suspends shows that here we are still at the algorithm, you know, rather than it just being a result of the lag. I always assumed it was just a result of the lag. Um, but those numbers were pretty solid. And again, the other day, they were rock solid. Um, and the, and the 670G just takes longer to resume insulin, much longer. Um, the other day I had, this is kind of a weak little summary. It was, I think, two different, two different suspends, um, the same thing, I had them both going on, the T-Slim and the Guardian, two different suspends, and, and the kind of the accumulation of suspended time between the two the T-Slim suspended me for 75 minutes and the 670G suspended me for 134 minutes for the exact same values. Um, so I don't know what I'm accomplishing, accomplishing. I think that what I'm trying to say is that it is why I'm learning how to trust the T-Slim. I'm still learning, it's been slow. Learning how to trust it a little bit more that it's going to resume. I'm not gonna get stuck without insulin for these long blocks of, of time. Um, and that's good because I don't do well with those long blocks of time. Um, that was it. That was what I came to do. I didn't do it well. Um, and now I'm going to go to bed. So thanks for watching. And I hope you have a splendid whatever day of the week it is. <laughs> Bye.